Hello. Apologize for the noisy background. It's not raining here. This is just my dishwasher. In the last tutorial, I promised that I will show how you can combine the clip editor with the video sequencer. So there's a lot of debate online saying, yeah, you can use it together or you can't use it together. It doesn't work yet. There's some issues. Um, the people who say it works, they don't explain you how and so on. So I tried to find it out myself. And I found, yes, you can. You can even use the clip editor with um, with the uh, compositor together and play all everything through the sequencer even cutting in the sequencer and then render your video but let's start from the from beginning from the beginning on, on file new you can go you can go to video fx don't save okay then you will get this uh, arrangement, window arrangement. In in the upper right window, I change it to the compositor. This will stay the same, and instead of the timeline, I change it to the video sequencer. So now we no we load our video. So what uh, what I will do is I will load a video. Will edit. I will stabilize it. My favorite task. Um, will apply some apply the two uh, D stabilization in the compositor. Bring everything into the sequencer. Cut it. Add some color grading and then export it as a new video. So first, as in the last in the last tutorials, um, I just go very quickly through the two destabilization process. So here, this shot is very easy because it's camera is always pointing just in the right in one direction. And to stabilize it, I just need to add some markers. Marker one can go here, scale. Add another one, maybe, maybe here. Another one here. Mm, I think that's fine. Maybe one more. Now I analyze and track the marker. You can do it frame by frame as, as I did it last in the last video, but the last video was more complex. So I can also try to just run it automatically. Automatic tracking is here. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's a very short clip, so it's actually finished here. You can set the scene frames here on the clip setting. Um, go back. But it already tracked my markers. It's a bit stupid without the timeline. So let's have the timeline first here. So it doesn't stabilize yet. So we need to go into stabilization, to destabilization. Then I, so if they are not uh, selected, just select or 
pressing A double time and then add the tracks and then if you want to see the stabilization happening you just go here on the clip display and show stable now you see it's immediately pinned down to these points you can uh, then use auto scale so it will give a bit of a room around the, the, the footage that it doesn't jump out of the frame the next thing you can play a bit with the different types of interpolation it always like depends what so this bicubic seems the most harsh with the strongest effects maybe we try that um, you can also maybe add the rotation and scale it seems like I don't need that for this shot so I just keep it off and the location influence you can adjust here because sometimes if, if you apply it with 100% it might be too harsh and then you get this wobbly effect which comes from the bigger sensor of the DSLR camera so I normally reduce that harsh stabilization a bit so it looks a bit more natural okay then we can add in the compositor we um, mark use notes Let's stop it for a while we don't need the render layers here but we need an input which is the movie clip and from here we can select the movie we just loaded uh, connect with the composite uh, with the output and and then we need to apply the, the 2d stabilization which is under here to distort stabilize 2d and here we also need to select that video and we can then um, we need to check which interpolation we want to use I just realized something um, just now when I recorded it that you actually so this is the, this would be the way you do it normally so it, you add your 2d stabilization here and then you render it through the compositor um, so I, I just realize that they actually don't need that if you run that for the sequencer let me show you how so I use the auto scale it should be fine um, you see that it's stabilizing the video already okay And I actually don't need this. Yeah, so it's all done here to destabilization. Now we go into the video sequencer, and in here. We just add the the clip. So add, add clip. And it refers to the same uh, clip as we have here. And you can go into preview. And oh let's let's do preview and sequencer. And you can see that it doesn't it doesn't show the stable the stable version. And there's another problem. There is no sound. There's also no sound. So what I'm gonna what I will add, uh, I will go into the movie in my movie folder. Get the original file here delete the video component and leave and just keep my sound file
so I have, now I have sound. And I want to add some. Oh, yeah, I'll maybe also show you that you can cut this here. We, we apply different color grading so just to see just to show you that this is work this works so here I add um, modifier color balance many windows here but since it looks quite nice so let's copy those selected strip they have all the same setting and then we change the setting a bit it's a, a bit different versions maybe this is a bit more extreme just to show you the okay so now Previously, I always thought that when you then export, you need to check this at the pro post processing. You need to check the how this how the how Blender like renders and how, which pipeline is using uh, is using the, comp the po compositing or the sequencer. So I thought I need to use the stabilization in the from the compositor to run through the sequencer, but no. And actually, you don't need to click this. You can, but it, now it runs through the sequencer. And if you would render that now, uh, so wait, wait. So just need to select the output. Say test, test one, okay, accept. Now, if I render that, it's yeah, it's not using the two D stabilization, the stable version of the clip, but it's you see that it's um, using the Compositor information. Oh, there's sorry, the color, the color balance. Okay. Of 
because I'm, I'm an idiot. I rendered uh, all the frames. Sorry for that. Yes, so we have our... <laughs> ...without stabilization. So now, how do we get the stabiliz stabilization into the sequencer? Well, there is the strip information and in under video... So here... Compositing, transform, video, tracker, you can click this, stable 2D clip. Of course you need to apply, it, apply this to each of these cuts now. I don't know what the undistorted clip is. But let's try. Anyway, the stable 2D clip version. That's what you need to click. And then we render the animation. It's a bit slower. And you see a, a slight wobble of the camera, but it works. So let's check, because I didn't keep the other one. But yeah, that's it. So if we compare... So it still it still moves a bit. The camera moves a bit, but that's because I chose the the, the location influence of the tracker with sixty uh, percent. I could crank that up to one, so then it's way more stable. But I think it's fine if it has a slight move. Okay, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial um, please give me a thumbs up subscribe and yeah see you next time <laughs>